Oh, would you look at the time? Welcome to Fringeworthy. My name is Patrick, and you are watching Fringeworthy. Today, we will be talking about the most elegant of legacy combo decks, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Let's begin. Ah, yes. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. We are running four fluctuators, as this deck is sometimes called fluctuator combo since most of our cards cycle for two. This allows us to cycle our cards mostly for free. We also have lotus petals as a way of having fast mana, and of course we still run the requisite one bloated toad for which the deck gets its name. First, let's talk about some of our more useful cycling cards. We're running four hollow ones because they make a decent plan B. We can early on dump a whole bunch of four fours and start beating our opponent's face with them. How barbaric. We're also running Cloud of Fairies. This is one that we want to cycle as soon as possible because with Unearth, we can actually unearth the Cloud of Fairies to go positive on mana. Additionally, we're running Vile Manifestations, a vile, brutish card that is also a backup strategy that we can, again, beat our opponent's face with. The key card that makes this deck much more successful than it has been in the past is, of course, Shadow of the Grave. With Shadow of the Grave, we can actually get back all of our cycled cards that we cycled for free and cycle them once again. We also run Miscalculation a rather decent way to counter our opponent's spells or ways to thwart us, but also cycles itself. In that vein, we are also running countervailing winds. As the game goes longer, we'll be able to counter harder and harder. On to our myriad of landscapes. We have the Blasted Landscape, the only cycling land we have that comes into play untapped, something to be very specifically knowing about. We also have Polluted Mire, since we'll be casting things that are black, Fetid Pools, Canyon Slough, and Remote Isle, all for similar reasons, as well as our irrigated farmlands and scattered groves. And oh, what's this? Thos's Oracle? Why, yes, that is our main win condition. Our goal is to be able to cycle away as many things as possible and then cast our Thos's Oracle. If they happen to counter it and it's not exiled, we can then unearth Thos's Oracle for a second attempt. We can repeat this process several times if need be. Now, you may think a deck like this has no sideboard, and there, you'd be wrong. We're actually running quite a robust sideboard. We have four repopulates as a way to get back other creatures from our graveyard back into our deck. There are times where if we have fizzled on our attempts, we may need to be able to not draw ourselves into oblivion. We also have lull to deal with any sort of creature combat our opponents might be dealing with. If we're looking at perhaps elves, we may want to be casting Lull instead of trying to counter some of their creatures. We also have Gilded Light as a way to prevent any sort of hand disruption or to fight against hard combo decks. We're also running four Angel Songs as another way to prevent combat damage, since that is so scary. And also we have Rebuild. This is a great way towards the end, if need be, to deal with a chalice on two. This is a very unlikely scenario, but is something we still need to plan for. Oh, looks like time's up for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please subscribe down below. If you have any other less elegant decks to be talking about, or that you'd like to see in a video in the future, please leave them in the comments. I'll be back again tomorrow with another deck. Hmm. Perhaps consider watching one of these other videos. I really should wind this.